So, um, yeah, I'd love to kind of maybe dive in and talk about a couple of the most frequently asked questions that I get and get your guys' kind of perspectives on those things. You know, the first one that that I would really like to explore is, you know, is the data science market saturated? I get that question a lot. And I think that, you know, us all three weighing in on that could be really interesting uh, for, for everyone watching this. So uh, what I think is that uh, that is not the scenario right now, uh, even though due to this recent pandemic event, right? I don't think so data science market is yet saturated because this is a growing technology, you know, organizations are still moving towards, um, you know, implementing AI application, AI stuff uh, within mo most of the use cases. So definitely it is not saturating. There is a hype. I, I, would, I would say that there is a hype because uh, again, uh, because people know what AI can actually do, you know, with respect to the companies. If you see some successful companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, right? So people can come, they can understand like what is the importance of the AI application. And as I say, that data science is a technique that can be applied in any domain as such, you know, any domain, any kind of work that you're actually trying to do. Like, as you said, sports analytics, right? So it is being extensively used in every sports, like let it be cricket, rugby, football, anything, right? So it is being extensively used, trust me in that. Uh, so considering this, uh, there will be a whole lot of growth. Uh, only the people that they should take care of is, they should try to upskill themselves as soon as possible. You know, at one point, because people will also be worried about automation. You know, automation is all about getting upskilled. You're bringing up application, which is doing by its own, right? So. Uh, if people have a fear that automation is going to eat their jobs, trust me, uh, if you go 50 to 60 years back, you know, people used to write in a book or pen. Now they, you have laptops, you are write, using some writing pad to explain. People, uh, we are able to communicate in this situation also, right, through this online platform. So this is how things get upscaled and we also need to get upscaled with respect to different technologies that come into picture, right? So yes, it, will not, it is not get saturated right now. Uh, Very cool. Well, how, what do you think, Shannon? Yeah, so in, in medicine or biology or, or broadly in, uh, in the life science, uh, I, th I believe that data is becoming, uh, essentially biology is becoming data intensive. So because um, if you might have heard a couple of decades ago, there was this thing called the Human Genome Project, where they, there was an aim to sequence the human genome and Originally, there was a big hype that once we uncover the human genome, we would be able to uh, discover all of the cures that could ever uh, that we could ever want it to. But then that pr was not really the case because it is only the beginning. And so the human genome project triggered other other similar projects that are in large scale, and other projects are also generating massive amounts of data. And uh, that will include like proteome or metabolome. And so all of these are the biological process that happens inside the human body and also in the microorganisms or in the uh, vir virus or bacteria or fungus. And so all of these will generate massive amount of data. And so I believe that there is an ever increasing need for data scientists and especially those who are trained in biology uh, making the transition to be a data scientist uh, because there is an increasing need to make sense of the ever increasing amounts of data. And for data scientists who are coming from like a computer science background, looking for making a transition to biology, that is also in high need because there's a lot of technical details that biologists or computational biologists could, could not uh, could not craft on their own. So, so they require software engineers or computer scientists to do that. Very cool, very cool. Uh, you know, I, I wanna highlight something that Chris said that I think was particularly relevant from my perspective on this, and that's upskilling. I think that there are a lot of data science positions that are still not being filled because they can't find qualified applicants. I think at the entry level, you know, there's a lot of people that are very interested, and I wouldn't say it's saturated there, but it's more saturated than at like a mid-level or a senior level data scientist. And so we get so many people that are that, that are knocking at the door, but if they just went one step further, you know, doing more projects, leveling up their skills a little bit more, 
there are so many, so many opportunities available for them. And I think that that's what uh, a lot of people don't realize is that if you go that little uh, extra mile and learning and building out your portfolio um, and enhancing your education, that's where everything starts to open up. You know, at the entry level of anything, there's going to be a barrier because everyone wants to get in. I see this in, in sports jobs all the time. But once you establish yourself um, and show what you're capable of, then, the, you know, kind of the, the, the world is yours in that case.